Okay, so just to close with a little thought on the Parsha, um, the whole, the Parshias that we're talking about is about the Rabbi Shalom's ownership of the land, ownership of the money, involvement with the people, his benevolence to the people, his desire almost to have like a socialist structure of life. That's what it almost looks like. It reminds me of two points that I'd like to make. One was, I once heard from the, uh, the, um, Reb Davidel of Navarduk was a great mind and he also had a tremendous social skill. He knew how to make shalom between people and there was a boundary dispute between two people that lived in his town in Navarduk. And they came and they were upset and each one had riots proof to his side and Reb David listened back and forth and he tried to make peace between them and finally, when he couldn't affect the outcome that he wanted, he told them, well, I need to go down and see the actual piece of land that we're talking about. And they were perplexed. They wanted to know, why would you have to go see But In the morning, he went out and he looked, he looked, he says, one minute. And he bends down, he was already an old man, and he listens to the ground. And he's listening. And he gets up and he says, aha. And he looks at them and he says, Yankel says the land is mine, and Shimon says the land is mine, but the land says they're both mine. They're coming here soon. Why are they fighting? They should make up comfortably because they're all mine. And the second they heard that, they understood. The land never gets sold forever. The land is never an eternal property or an eternal possession. The land always sucks everybody in. They made up right away. And the positioning of the two parish is <clears throat> that we start with a discussion of who owns what and what owns who, and then we move right into Bechukhoisai, which starts off in Bechukhoisai Teilechu Ves Mitzvoisai Tishmairu, and Rashi explains Bechukhoisai Mitzvoisai is Hevu Amelim Batayra, toil in Taira. Generally, Amelus is Karka, Rashi is saying toil in Taira, and it also reminds me of a beautiful um, idea that the Chafetz Chaim used to always say, which was, when we finish a Mesechta, we always say, Heim HaMeilim V'Anu HaMeilim. Anu HaMeilim V'Heim HaMeilim. We say, Anu HaMeilim U'Mekablim Schar V'Heim HaMeilim V'Ein Mekablim Schar. And the Chafetz Chaim used to talk about people that work and people that are involved in business. He says, if it works, it works. If they make the money, they made it. But the Amelus doesn't get, the Amelus doesn't get any reciprocity. The amount of work they put in doesn't really have any direct result in the outcome. In Torah, it's not like that. If you work and you try, even if you don't remember, even if you don't understand, that Amelus is extremely rewarded. I remember hearing from an uncle of mine that Rav Gusman Zatzal once asked the Chavetz Chaim, you have to learn every Rashi, every Taisvis, every Rashbam. I'm not going to remember all of them. And the Chafetz Chaim said, Heim HaMeilim U'Mekablum Schar. The Schar you're going to get for the Amelus is, is that in Oilam Abba, you'll know everything. There's no Shikha in Oilam Abba. So I just want to close by saying first, um, a very warm Yashikoyach and a Chazak Ve'amatz Te'elad. I think this project is a, I would say, beautiful project that brings Torah to people all over, every scope, every shape, every walk, and it's a tremendous Kiddush Hashem, and I feel very lucky that he allowed me to be involved in bringing Torah to the masses like this. And I also want to wish everybody good Shabbos, and Chazak Chazak Venis Chazek. Thank <laughs> you.